Seeds is ads do. There was a couple things that somehow or another did not get recorded. I don't think I pushed the button. <laughs> I want to just say thank you again to all the new subscribers that have come over, uh, more than likely from Curtis's channel. Thank you so much, guys. It really means a lot. If there's anything that you might want to see, see me cover, go ahead and let me know. Uh, just leave it down in the comments below. And there's no better time like the present to go ahead and subscribe right now. So what are you waiting for? Party. Anyhow, a little bit about us. See the Zanzadu here at the Little Plot That Could is located in Fontana, California. Our primary source of revenue is microgreens. That's pretty much the backbone to our business. Uh, although, as you can see, we do kind of dabble around in field crops as well. Most of that is uh, leafy greens. This year, it's not the first year, but this year we have revisited the squash, we have cucumber, and then we got tomatoes growing in the backyard as well. We primarily sell everything to farmer's markets. What else did I leave out? We're going into our fourth year of production. We're running about, right about a quarter acre lot. Yeah, so once again, thank you, and I hope you enjoy. Peace. Right about seven o'clock right now. I gotta get some compost tea and done. This is my front yard plot. This is the newest plot. We just put this in a couple months ago. It gets windy up here. That's why I had to put in that fence. We get a, a lot of our uh, prevailing winds come from the Santa Ana's. They're southern blowing wind. They come off of that northern point and blow um, that way towards the ocean, right? So anyway, that's why the fence is up here. It does an okay job, but at the same time, as you can see, we're in a lot of the open area here so you know what we have growing is some squash one of the little side ventures to the seeds of zanzadu and selling our microgreens is actually uh juicing so we juice um right now we just do two different types of juices both of them consist of zucchini juice believe it or not if you guys haven't tried it it's really good um then we have right here some kind of sporadically growing salad mix unfortunately this is brand new compost we got this delivered a couple months back this is the exact same compost that i actually have in the back as well and we'll show you how things are looking back there we also have salad nova growing up here right now as well that stuff is just getting nailed by cutworms so stay tuned i actually have a couple uh, product reviews on some organic insecticides that i'm going to be applying to see what works right and inside of here is our Grow room slash post harvesting section. Yeah. We actually just got done seeding a bunch of sunflower shoots. Speaking of which, we still have those guys up here right now. So this big rack is a pallet rack. Um, here in Fontana, there's just a lot of stuff like this, industrial type of warehousey stuff. Um, so coming across these types of racks is really easy. This is this thing is awesome. Um, it started out originally as a self-watering microgreen system but it just didn't work out what we've started to do is just pretty much primarily grow our sunflower microgreens on here although the war the weather is warming up i mean like right now they don't even need to be in here so we can actually put these guys outside more uh we just didn't have anything to put on there and i need a little bit more space because we just picked up a couple markets um so we put those guys underneath there but pretty soon that's just going to be like herbs and stuff like that right here this is just a uh, pretty much a standard reach in cooler It holds nine totes. Um, these are the better totes to get with it. If you do have one, you plan on getting to reach it. Those totes. You see the difference between these ones and then these ones? The blue ones kind of bubbled out a little bit. A couple inches that it actually, uh, that it takes, actually takes up enough room to where things get all kind of cattywampus inside of there. So it kind of, kind of sucks I had bought those totes um, right before I actually bought this fridge we used to have a regular indoor fridge uh, and it went out on us one day right when we were doing like a, a harvest so I had to go run and find a, uh, a fridge I've always, I wanted a, a walk-in fridge but unfortunately all I could afford running was this refrigerator right here um, so you got this you can get these relatively cheap on Craigslist as well getting back to this rack This rack actually because it is so big and I do want to make it for the most part post harvesting in here only This is the only thing that makes us a grow room kind of I want to move this outside Where the other microgreens are growing here. We have Pretty much the post harvesting section portion of it, it is the uh, bubbler 
our salad spinner, the fan dryer. Uh, if you guys want to take a closer look on how to build any of these, I have videos on both the bubbler as well as the salad spinner. I haven't done one on the, um, the dryer yet. Maybe I will. This setup right here is super clutch. I wanted to make it kind of, I like things kind of tight and compact. I mean, I guess I've always kind of grown in really tight and compact quarters. So I've kind of become accustomed to doing things that way. But anyhow, as you can see, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty efficient here. It's just like we bubble, we spin, we dry. And then normally right here, we'll set up another little table. And this is where we'll um, bag stuff and whatever, or, you know, just get stuff off and then back into the cooler. So yeah, man, it's pretty cool. What we want to do here, however, is keep that going to where the big rack is. That's why I kind of want to move this and keep a table going. So, and that's where we can have everything lined up. We can have all of our clamshells, be able to do all the bagging, do all the clamshelling, everything right there. Uh, and then walk pretty much directly into what we want to build, which is a new walk-in cooler right there in that corner. Um, so stay tuned. We have some more work here to do. We want to get all the walls so they know there's splash guarded and all that kind of good stuff up here. I've already come through and painted it with really high quality paint. So everything in here is waterproof as well as mold proof. But nevertheless, I really want to get this thing just kind of tip top, right? Let's go outside. This is pretty much where we grow all the microgreens, especially this time of the year. Underneath this canopy, well, I mean, we could still get away with growing a lot of our microgreens up front. It makes it a lot easier if we just roll them right out front because we can just open up the garage door. <laughs> but it um, is nice to have them underneath this canopy as well because it gets really hot out here, like really hot. And when that sun is just beating down on them, I don't care what you do, dude, they just melt. So this canopy really helps slow things down. Uh, we also get a lot of wind. So it also helps against that to safeguard because we can use the house as like a windbreak, like the top of the canopy as close as we can to the, uh, to the house. And so what ends up happening is a little bit of air does kind of come through here, but for the most part, a lot of it kind of goes across the top of the canopy and then it kind of just dissipates out there. So not too much wind gets underneath here. Uh, for an example of that, you can look down in some previous videos as well. I'll leave the, if you want to check it out. Um, but anyway, yeah, man, this section right here, it's our stationary section. And so things like our peas, the radish will go on here. But a lot of the other stuff are all on casters. So it makes it really easy for us to move microgreens around. It's a lot easier to move 12 microgreens at a time than it is to do like one to three at a time. That's all I can carry. So we have two different racks, our 12 space rack. And then we also do those big ones back there, our 20 space racks. Pretty soon, that's what we're gonna end up putting all the, mi I'm sorry, all the uh, sunflower microgreens on. Kind of like what I was getting at earlier, this area right here may end up being the big rack that's inside of there, if it does work. We might put that in this area here and then get rid of our stationary racks and just keep everything else on rollers and then we can move things back and forth and kind of line things up the way we want to. So pretty soon we're gonna be framing out this carport here because as the heat or as the summer comes, the birds wake up. <laughs> There's tons of trees back here and they just love our microgreens. So they come in and just kind of eat microgreens all day. So anyway, we're going to pretty much frame this up and then put bird netting all around the exposed parts or just around the border. Probably just leave that up all year long and then the plan is to go ahead and just put plastic on it, making this thing a greenhouse where we will just grow our microgreens out here um, year round. Check this out. I'm not sure if you guys can really see up there but we've actually gone solar. So come winter time, that's really gonna help us out a lot in the bill. <laughs> we get normally nailed pretty hard, at least personally here, I get hit pretty hard um, warming things up and keeping lights on. That's one of the biggest reasons why inside there, you notice like the sunflowers underneath that big rack, there's not a lot of light. I've not had one problem with that amount of light. You do have to do a bit of rotation but we do that when we water anyway, so it's cool. That's another thing too I wanted to bring up in this canopy. With everything being so tight together, these, these um, 
These PVC racks used to be a part of another mic like of another grow that I had, like my first grow actually. That's when I built these guys. So everything's really tight and compacted together. That's cool because the P doesn't seem to need that much light. I mean, it does get some during the day, of course, a lot more than what you're seeing now, but it doesn't get as much as a lot of the other parts in the canopy does. So anyhow, we do rotate these, but normally, to be honest with you, I can get away with normally rotating them about maybe once or twice a week. At this point, they're just like, this helps them just stretch. And then about Friday, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, but on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, we're going to be harvesting out all this pea that's about nine trays of pea right here we're gonna harvest all those and then we'll start moving these pea down here up and they probably will end up being ready saturday now off to the back we run 20 uh, rows here uh 17 of those being a 30 foot row the other three are right about like a 10 foot row if you will <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit more for the most part the main things that we grow here on the field are salad greens like a salad mix that's like red russian kale arugula romaine and a multitude of just different things that we'll throw in there and that consists of mainly our main mix we do nine rows of the uh of that mix and then the rest is arugula Pretty much what's going on out here Along the border, I don't know if you guys can see it. We actually have some uh, kooka melon growing. Look at this kooks, man. Underneath this is a bunch of radish. That is a old spit microgreen compost bag. <laughs> so we got radish going underneath there. A lot of the cucumbers didn't do well this year. The kooka melon, they look like they're doing pretty damn good. We got a couple more of those guys up there we're going to plant out. And then we have some more cucumbers coming along pretty soon. We do uh, compact head irrigation as well as sprayers. We, I did kind of play with those wobblers. Those are going to those are gonna get taken out. The wobbler just didn't work out well back here. So I'm going to take those guys out and I'm going to put more of the sprayers in here. And that's just more or less for compensation. As temperatures start rising, we have to have something that's going to be able to cool off the uh the leaves of our salad greens otherwise it's super bitter and it's just not a good situation the plan is to have those sprayers on there and much like the sprayers that you see at your grocery store right that kind of come on in the produce section that's kind of the same idea we're just going to be kind of keeping our leaves cool back here and um yeah last year it worked out really well we were however just running the compact sprinkler heads and that kind of got a little bit pricey. A really good chance though, we actually do go drip back here. I have actually, I've got, I have four inch drip line. We actually have it up front right now. I'm actually looking forward to how that kind of fares with the summer, but we might end up using that same four inch drip tape back here. And uh, that's really gonna help keeping us down, uh, keep our water bill down. And then of course we'll do some sprays, probably, I don't know, a couple minutes a day. Uh, and that's just going to be, like I said, to cool off the leaves. The drip tape is going to uh, hopefully just take care of all the roots. We have the shed. So that's where we're going to have our new nursery. Doing a lot more starts. Um, a lot of other cool things might be going on in there as well. So we're really looking forward to that. Another thing too this year, the first time I'm actually going to do this is uh, take out fruit. So I have a bunch of pomegranate. Pomegranate grows wild out here, man. It loves to grow out here. So we have a bunch of these pomegranates. These are white pomegranates as well. So let's give those guys a go. They really sell well here. And then as well, I can juice them too. So it's really cool. And then here are the tomatoes. As you can see, we're doing them all low and lean. I got to come out here tomorrow and um, prune them up. I'm pretty sure there's a couple other cats out there that are doing a low and lean outdoors. But... Stephen Cornette was the first one that I found. So I don't know if there's anybody else, but if there is, yo, leave some suggestions. I would love to see what they did differently so we can improve these guys. One thing as I touch it um, that I definitely would do different is not use this wire. Oh, yeah, I want to use that. It just kind of bows down. Uh, we can kind of keep it tight so that's pretty cool it's easy to work with is why i used it but i don't really like the way it bows down as these things grow up i don't know if the the heaviness of the plant is going to be pulling down more on this and i'm going to have to constantly be um making these tighter although 
I didn't install them just yet, or I didn't install them when I first installed this system, but we do have more turnbuckles like this. So if things start becoming a problem, I'll figure out some type of attachment system down here. A way to anchor them down outside of the uh, rebar and then use that turnbuckle to uh, really make that line taut. <laughs> taut. What's the difference between taut and tight? I don't I don't know. Anyway, we got fruit going on these guys too, man. Check out. Believe it or not, there's right about 90 plants in this little area, man. Um, each one of these rows are at 30 plants. So we really have to stay on top of our suckering. And then um, pretty soon we'll have this carousel going. Stay tuned for that. We will definitely show you guys how to do some Lauren leaning. Uh, I have an Instagram video out now about pruning if you guys want to check that guy out. I'll show you guys a lot more about the just the trellising as well on this thing. It's really cool. It's an awesome system. I'm really looking forward to uh, generating a lot of tomatoes. Now that being said about our tomatoes, because I believe only about in August, late July, August, we get hit pretty hard. It just gets super hot here. And a lot of times our tomatoes just end up just looking haggard, man. They just get jacked up. So this year what I'm thinking about doing is actually taking the, some of the suckers, making them clones, and then replanting them out so that we don't have to wait too long to start getting our crops back again. So almost doing like, so yeah, basically just doing a, two successions of tomatoes. So that's kind of the plan here. Um, yeah, we'll see how that works out. Well, anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the subscriptions. It really means a lot, man. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do, man. Let's see what we can figure out out here. Peace out.